seminar series for our students. So third year and fourth year students go through a two year uh, experience that culminates in their capstone, which would be based on the theme uh, of leadership. So that's a little bit about me. And I am co-presenting with. Uh, I am Robert Stroud, and I teach at Horsey University, which is also in Tokyo, uh, not so far from Maria's campus, actually. And um, I teach a seminar which also focuses on leadership. Um, I'm in an economics department, so the English level isn't particularly high. Um, so although I was put under a lot of pressure to teach an English seminar, uh, I decided not to do that and focus it more on leadership. So most of the students are Japanese, and the common language in the classroom is actually Japanese. Challenging for me, but also allows a lot of students to not worry about the language barrier as much, and focus on the uh, globalization, if you like, what we're trying to actually do. Um, okay. And so how did we get here this afternoon? Bob and I discovered each other about two years ago. And through this discovery, we learned that we were both teaching leadership at two different um, top global universities in two different languages with two different sets of students. And we said, could you imagine us bringing our students together? And we didn't know what that would look like. We didn't know what the goal would be. But just the idea of finding a colleague, a kindred spirit, in the same content area was very refreshing. And so we brainstormed and said, what if we bring our students together for a day of leadership work. And so to that end, we then decided that we would address this particular case study question. So we're both teaching leadership, but we both come from different fields, from different orientations. So the question then that we posed was, what would be the best way to teach leadership? What instructional strategies? How can we best approach this? What has the literature said about teaching leadership? And how might we be able to embark um, and, better, and become better informed about the work that we are doing? And so then to that end, one of the theoretical frameworks that we um, pulled to use for understanding the teaching of leadership was um, this particular one, Harvey and Jenkinson. What they say is that in order to teach leadership, there are three different elements that we want to be able to engage. Certainly, we need the knowledge. So we need to have the leadership theories and leadership approaches inform students. So that's the content. That's leadership knowledge. But I can tell you, no one takes my seminar course series because they want to learn leadership theory. They don't do it. They come because they want to become better leaders. And that takes us to Jenkins, uh, Harvey and Jenkins' second element, and that is the element of practice. Praxis. How do you take theory and put it into the real world? No, so how can you become a better leader through the practice of leadership? So now we're taking knowledge, content, and we're applying it out into the real world. So what would that look like for undergraduate students? And the third element that they say it cannot happen without this leadership education cannot happen without reflection. And this is critical reflection. This is the opportunity where students are allowed to take theory, application, and do critical reflection on it, critical thinking to address how is this informing the leader that I am becoming. And that then is their model for leadership education. And we then pose, well, how does this model apply to the work that we do with our students, 50 plus students. So it's very much a work in progress, but um, what we did, we did uh, initially we did what we called a leadership camp at uh, my campus, Horsey University. Um, we have some, I think one student <coughs> here who actually attended, out of the front here, is it four of the school students? How many students were at the leadership? And we have about half a dozen. Okay. So they're also very good to talk to afterwards. <laughs> They'll tell you all the truth afterwards <laughs> uh, about what actually happened. Um, and it's very much a work in progress still. We're going to build on the next camp. Uh, probably talk about that maybe today. Um, initially, it was 29 students from uh, Hossie University. Three who came from another seminar who heard about us and were interested. Um, 28 from Solka. So it's a very even match between the two universities. Um, basically, we let the students do everything. 
Um, we, made them, we gave them the knowledge about what leadership is, different topics, uh, the preparation for the camp, very autonomous. I had three of my students who were going to host it, uh, who basically organized the scheduling, um, helped different groups with their topics and development. Each topic involved um, activities and feedback on what students should have learned within those workshops. Uh, it was managed by the students, which was excellent for me and Maria. We just drank coffee all day and just kind of walked around. Very much as we're doing today, actually. Um, in and out of rooms, sitting down, listening, or not listening. Uh, we did our best to listen. Um, but we gave them a huge amount of work on uh, That was uh, working on their leadership on many different levels, as you can imagine. Not only the content of the workshops, but also just throwing something at them like that, how they could actually manage that or not and the learning experiences that come with that as well. And the reflections, Maria was saying, an incredibly important part of this, to take away what they'd learned, reflect on it later after these camps, uh, and see how they can actually integrate that new way of thinking into their lives. Um, this is just an idea of the kind of workshops. There were more, um, and basically they had topics such as these, team strategy planning, managing creative meetings. The students came up with these by themselves, by the way. Um, and basically they were about one hour in length for the first time, which included about five or ten minutes introduction, 30 to 40 minutes activity, um, and then about a 15 to 20 minutes reflection period. Um, so that ran uh, for about six or seven hours a day. Um, and the feedback from, well first of all the observations, this is for, uh, from Maria and myself. Huge amount of autonomy as you can imagine. Language barriers, obviously enormous things. Uh, and all the students here and there can tell you about that. The first camp was very challenging in terms of uh, my seminar speaking very low level of English, uh, Maria's seminar having a mixture of some bilingual students, some who didn't speak Japanese so well. So if you can imagine the chaos that might be, which was a lot of fun, I thought. Um, lack of mixing between the two groups, these two worlds of different thinking or students, some not so, some in the middle, but a lot of kind of separation. Uh, and the feedback from the students themselves, mine, they enjoyed it. Uh, they felt they didn't prepare them for it, even though they actually did have quite a lot of preparation time. Uh, they wanted to mix more with the other students. And language barrier preventing participation. They felt they couldn't participate in workshops because of perhaps their English ability. Uh, Salford University students, um, they also enjoyed it. Lack of communication about it beforehand, um, definitely because this was the first time the preparation between the two uh, universities was probably underdone, if you like. Um, language barrier preventing interactions, not participation, but interactions, interesting difference there. Uh, they also wanted more mixing. So, on the whole, they wanted to talk more with the other groups. Uh, for various reasons, they didn't. Um, so basically, we're going to do the next camp, which was the return leg, if you like, the away game, where we're going to go to Salt University, and we're going to take Mike over there. It was about six months later, um, in December and last year, and basically, we, the changes we made, we made every workshop was going to be by link. So a huge uh, amount of workload to put on the students compared to the first time. They had to consider people who couldn't speak their own language. And I thought that was going to be an excellent uh, learning uh, experiment for them. Something they probably hadn't thought of before. Um, oh, we also assigned uh, camp leaders to both universities. So there was going to be this coordination between them prior to the camp to learn as well. Uh, and also a lunch together. We didn't do that the first time. Um, out of workshop interaction. Um, we kind of didn't see, we didn't value it maybe the first time. But from the feedback we thought the second time we should be valued a lot more. So this was the second time. Um, same kind of group size of students. Um, again, they designed everything, but with the added uh, element of everything has to be bilingual. Um, so often you would have perhaps two speakers, one speaking in English, one translating Japanese, or vice versa. Or some uh, from Seoul University, there were some bilingual students who just do the whole thing themselves, which is great. Um, also, the camp leaders, I had two or three, I think it was three students from my university, three from Maria's, and they had to do the email communication, maybe meet once or twice to actually organize it. Kind of a conference, so it's a big deal. 
a lot of organizing to do beforehand. Um, again, managed by the students, uh, they did a great job actually. Um, and again, reflection here is writing reports out of the account about what they've learned and everything. Um, here's an idea of the kind of topics. This time around, I felt they were a bit deeper, if you like, about what a leader really is. The first time for me felt a bit more surface level about cooperating in a team, if you like, or what, what, what is a good team or what is a good leader. Whereas this time, the topics were becoming much more specific. I think we moved on from the first count. Things were coming a bit, a bit deeper in the way like that. Uh, observations of fewer language barriers uh, because of the bilingual element. It really eliminated a lot of that, which was great. Um, more interaction between policy and software students, a little bit, not, not hugely. Uh, a bit more out of workshop stuff, just chatting about life in general and different viewpoints about things, which was good. Um, differences in student role expectations. I'll come back to that again at the end. That was mostly from my side of Japanese students' perspective of what leadership is or how you should uh, perform within workshops uh, if you are presenting about leadership as well. Um, and the feedback actually became very similar between the two groups. Enjoyment, um, more chance for self-reflect as well. Uh, they wanted longer workshops. They wanted to get deeper and deeper and deeper thinking about things more how to reflect on what was being learned and things like that. Uh, more break times and not just the lunch. More interaction, not just workshops with each other to kind of share their global uh, thinking, if you like, and become more understanding of each other. Uh, and they wanted more physical movement. Maybe they didn't like sitting around so much the second time because it was getting a bit more um, topic focused, I guess. And that's it. So, if we now take this information and this experience, and again, imagine 50 plus students from two different universities conducting basically two one-day conferences on leadership development. The best way to learn something is when you have to teach it. And that was exactly what was happening through this experiential uh, activity. So if we take it back to the theoretical analysis, in terms of knowledge, students had to have that leadership content models, approaches, questioning how can we best uh, operationalize this concept in order for all of the participants to be able to grasp the concept that was being uh, presented. So knowledge was there through the two-day camps. The idea of application, what was great was that it was training on the ground. I mean, they had to be able to take full responsibility, and if it wasn't working, how did they mix it up? That was really, uh, I mean, as professors, many of us know, boy, you stand in front of your class and boy, if it falls flat, you're gonna try something different next time. And, and to have undergraduates doing this work, teaching the elements of leadership and the practice of leadership, and then the reflection, I think that's where the synthesis comes about. And I think one of the major findings was that if we think about leadership, leadership is about relationships. It's relational. And what this theoretical model doesn't bring out is that emphasis on relationship. When they wanted more break time, when they wanted more communication, when they wanted more engagement, both inside of the activities and outside, it was relationship building that they were seeking in this pursuit of leadership development. And so if we go to the next slide, back to the research question, so then what are the most effective strategies? So Harvey and Jenkins, in their research, had outlined seven different practices for effective teaching. As I reviewed those, as we reviewed those, these were the three practices, effective strategies, that really enhanced the opportunity to move this forward. So one of the strategies is skill building. When you have presentations to do, when you have to facilitate an hour-long session, you begin to develop presentation skills, um, you begin to learn how to communicate, how to message. Students definitely saw um, development of these skills from camp one to camp two. The other effective strategy is this, what he calls an interactive conceptual understanding. And peer teaching is at the core of this. When you are teaching peers, the understanding deepens. 
and we saw that that was happening from Camp 1 to Camp 2. And I think as we both engage in conversations with our respective classes and respective students, the personal growth, and I'll just share one vignette to try to exemplify that personal growth. After Camp 1, SOCA students returned and said, yeah, I don't know that I want to do that again. Yeah, that wasn't very fun. Yeah, they didn't even speak English. And, I, yeah, and there was a whole list of like grumbling about how difficult it had been. Not the leadership concepts, but the interactive, the engagement side of it. And I posed a question and I said, what prevented you from stopping what was happening and correcting it while you were at the camp? Why were you victims? Why did you just allow it to continue? Bob kept saying, you know, this is their camp, let them figure it out. And everything in me wanted to stop the process and say, Bob, okay, I know you want this autonomous learning. However, this is going south really fast. Why don't we intervene? And Bob would look at me and say, you know, this is great. They're going to figure it out. And I'm like, who is my hair quiet? And he's like, everything in me wanted to intervene. The student's reflection was, we didn't know we could have stopped it. We didn't know that we had both a responsibility and the power. So this whole discussion about power and leadership emerged out of the, the in between camp one going on to camp two. And so then that takes us to our uh, lessons learned. And I'll just continue and just say that I think one of the lessons that emerged very clearly was that having gone from a difficult and challenging leadership experience to one that was, I believe on all accounts, extremely successful, so going from June to December, this perspective of bending adversity, there's a Japanese proverb that, that speaks to this, taking a difficult, challenging situation and creating something positive out of it. They, they definitely exemplify this concept of bending adversity, being able to learn and, and take responsibility and move forward. And I think that the other lesson learned for me was that the reflection, for as painful and difficult as it is sometimes, and it takes time, it takes time to be in dialogue and in discussion with each other, but that reflection period with students allowed them to internalize both the knowledge, the practice, and to be able to embrace what did this mean for their own self-identity as emerging leaders. And so it reaffirmed for me that this conceptual model has to include both content, practice, and the element of reflection. And I'm in complete agreement with Maria. Uh, from my side as well, having a mostly Japanese seminar of students, and you put them in these roles of leadership, uh, the first thing that really struck me is what their perspective that is, and how important or not learning to be a leader in education is, because uh, my seminar, uh, economic students mainly, and they sit in lectures and listen, and very much filling with one kind of education, if they're not sleeping. Um, so basically, when you just threw them in and said, okay, your job, and they would see me sat in a chair and look to me like, you know, scared sheep. Like, what do I do? My adapter doesn't work. Or what, what, what do I do? I didn't write like that bit in English. Figure it out. Just do it. And I think in the beginning, they saw that as a laziness from my son. 10% <laughs> true, maybe. Um, but actually, what they learned from that and how they went on to the next camp and progressed as people, I was so proud of them because they'd actually learned that. But they had to go through this painful step. And I think in the future, before anybody did something like this with a camp, with Japanese students, taking time to explain why that style of education is important and why you're going to make them autonomous so they understand the value of it is really important rather than kind of just being afraid of it. And the other thing was uh, out of workshop interactions, things going wrong on the day, just mixing with people from a different way of thinking, um, allowing time for that, not just being too workshop heavy at things like this. Just allowing them to figure things out, discuss things together, um, is a different level of learning to be a leader or learning to be globally confident. Um, and another thing I did today. Um, and that's it, we're looking forward to doing the next one in November or December. Maybe. Oh, you're taking it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, just a question. How long were the uh, camps in? Uh,
I, I include students in the recruitment process in order to lose more money. And we, we try to make it 50 50 so that we don't start over one way or the other. Our overtime right now, so if you have other questions, these uh, presenters will be here the rest of the day, so feel free to go up to the